One of the uh, areas that students perhaps have more difficulty than others is being able to sketch what a curve looks like without plotting it. Now, with the advent of the modern uh, graphics calculators and the computer programs that are available, of course, this is a very easy thing to overcome. But you must remember in Core 1 that you're not allowed a, a calculating aid, and so um, you have to have uh, an idea of what graphs look like um, without that facility. Now, at least they're reasonably kind to you and, and don't um, want you to cope with too difficult uh, situations, but it is crucial that you have some sort of systematic approach to this, really. Now, the basic equation that you're expected to handle looks quite simple. Uh, a multiple of x to the power n. Now, the problem is that it does depend on what n is equal to. And it's best to look at the categories separately, I think. So we'll try and um, play through this with, with each of the possibilities that you might, uh, might meet. Now, the first one is if n is a positive integer. In other words, y equals x, y equals x squared, y equals x cubed, y equals x to the fourth, and so on. Well, we all know what y equals x looks like. It's a straight line. Hopefully by now you all know what y equals x squared looks like because I've certainly used it a number of times. It looks like that. x cubed, again, should be pretty well known to you. And it's a sort of a shape a bit like that. x to the fourth, you won't have met so often. But all that happens is that it's similar to x squared, but much steeper. And one of the problems with sketching is that it's often not possible to convey the true shape of the graph. I mean, this x to the fourth graph goes up very, very steeply. And even x squared, if you think that by the time x is 3, it's already up to 9. So in fact, even on my little picture here, um, 9 would be somewhere up here. So it's actually a lot steeper than that. But everybody draws it like this because that, that's just the picture you have in your mind. So we can see what happens then that if n uh, is an even power, x squared, x to the fourth, it tends to be this sort of shape here. Whereas if n is odd, even here, I mean this is really of course x to the power one, it's still got the shape of going through from this quadrant to that quadrant up there. So that's the first basic situation then that if n is a positive integer, we have this swapping over between a parabola type and uh, what, that sort of squiggly curve um, going from this quadrant to this quadrant. OK, now the second situation. So we'll look next then at n being a negative integer. So this time we will have x to the negative 1, x to the negative 2, negative 3, and so on. The negative power is, of course, uh, a 1 over situation. And these are called reciprocal graphs. So this would usually be written, uh, certainly in the exam question, as 1 over x. And 1 over x looks a bit like that. Now, 
a totally different type of graph, you see, to the previous one. And it has this scenario where you can see that the graph itself gets very close to the x and y axes, but it never actually reaches that line, never reaches the axis. And that situation where a curve gets closer to something is described as um, asymptotic behaviour. And, and this line here is called an asymptote. Yes, that is a real word. Um, so an asymptote is a line that a curve approaches. So in this situation then the x-axis would be an asymptote and of course the y-axis would be an asymptote. So that would be your 1 over x graph. And the reason it's that way round is because if x gets larger and larger, so as we're going this way, uh, x is increasing. And of course, because it's 1 over x in the equation, 1 over a bigger number, the answer is getting smaller and smaller. So 1 over 10, 1 over 100, 1 over 1,000, y is getting smaller and smaller. Whereas this way, x is getting uh, smaller and smaller here. And so 1 over 0.1, 1 over 0 0.01, the answer gets bigger and bigger, and so the graph whizzes off up there. Now, x to the minus 2 means 1 over x squared. So whatever x is, it's going to be squared, which means that y can't be negative. And so we now have a reciprocal graph which cannot be below the x-axis. And so it does that. And as we go down here, the x cube graph does that. And the x to the fourth graph, you get the idea now, don't you? We'll do that. And notice I'm trying hard uh, to make them look a little bit squarer. The, the, the bigger the power here, the closer these things get to looking like um, squares. Okay, so that's what happens then when n is a negative integer. Finally then we'll look at n being a fraction and we'll stick to positive fractions because that's probably all you'll get in the exam. Now these are very tricky and uh, you won't get anything particularly difficult here and you just have to be um, sensible about, about your interpretation of the, of the equation. So let's just look at things one at a time rather than systematically this time. So x to the half. Now of course x to the half, what does that mean? It means the square root of x. So the first thing we notice, x cannot be negative. We cannot have the square root of a negative number. So there will be no graph to the left um, of the y-axis, the negative x values. Now the square root of a number is a different sort of situation to a power of a number because it doesn't go up so quickly. And in fact, it tends to look a little bit like that. Now there are lots of ways of justifying why it looks like that. Um, and I think that it's actually beyond the scope of, of where we are in the course at the moment. Um, when you do some differentiation of these, you can look at the gradient here and you find that the gradient has to be going down vertically, uh, things like that. And so I think at this stage I just want you to accept that the square root graph curves around like that. The other thing we could have, let's have x to the two thirds. Now this is very tricky because there's some debate as to what that means. Now, 
I'll show you what the graph looks like and try and justify it. It's normally written like this, a bit like a bird's wings. Now again, the reason it comes in like this is because if you were able to understand differentiation at this point, uh, you would find that the gradient here again is vertical like that. This sort of shape is called a cusp and if x is negative then what does this tell us to do? Well some people would argue that x to the two thirds means the cube root answer squared. So if you had x that was negative 8 then the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2 and if you square it you get the answer of 4. So I think that's the best way to look at this. So if x is negative 8 we have negative 8 to the 2 thirds which is negative 2 squared which is 4. On the other hand you may be the sort of person that squares first and then cube roots afterwards. So if you square negative 8 you get 64 but at least you still end up with 4 as the answer. So it depends which way you look at this um, to, to justify that that's what it looks like. But then write an equation that looks a little bit similar, running out of space here but I'd like to keep these all on the same board together so let's fence off a bit. If we had x to the four thirds then we would find that it no longer has a pointy bit but it does more that. Again if you were able to differentiate this you would find that the gradient here was, was zero. These don't crop up very often in the exam. They tend to worry more about the, the positive and negative integers but try and think your way through the question. Try and feel a few points, see what the y values and the x values, so almost plot them to be on the safe side because it's not really easy to give rules uh, as to generally what they look like. So best of luck with these, that, uh, I, think, I think they're a bit tricky. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.